Like, there's a few alcohols I avoid altogether. Like, I won't drink tequila. Can't drink it, because I take a shot, and then it's tomorrow. <laughs> you know, now everyone's real mad at me, and I got to figure out why, and I feel sick. I'm like, well, this is fun. Uh, I also, I cannot drink wine. Can't drink, I get gossipy. <laughs> yeah, I start spilling secrets. It's nuts. It's nuts. I'll be like, guess who's not circumcised? <laughs> My friends are like, just watch the game. We know it's you. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> but I like to, sometimes I like to ask the audience, like if there's a, cause I got the best answer, you know, I asked them, like, is there an alcohol you avoid? And there was one dude, his name was Max. Uh, it was an outdoor show. And uh, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I can't drink absinthe. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's like 70% or something, plus other stuff's supposed to happen. I'm like, man, what happens when you drink absinthe? And he's like, well, I'm a gay dude, and... Ah! <laughs> yeah, it gets better the more you picture it. <laughs> so I have a, a, a friend, good friend of mine. His name is uh, Brandon Craig. He's a comedian, and he's gay from Calgary. Last time I was in Calgary doing a show with him, uh, we did a show together. It ended at 10 p.m., and then we had a house party at midnight. So we had two hours of kill in between. So I'm like, man, what do you want to do? You want to grab a drink? And he's like, bro, would you come with me to the gay club? Now, I'd never been before, okay? Straight, but I heard good things. <laughs> and I love dancing. So I'm like, yeah, man, let's check it out, all right? So he's not drinking. He drives us there. The line up to this club is around the block. And right away, I got negative. I'm like, oh, man, there's no way I'm getting in. And I walk past the bouncer, and he sees me. He's like, hey, blue eyes, get inside. No cover and slaps my ass. I was like, whoa, pretty good start. Like, this has never happened before, right? So I go in, Brandon's not drinking, right? He just goes to the bar, uh, dance floor, starts uh, uh, dancing. Uh, bartender, I go to the bar. Bartender's there, I'm like, hey man, can I get a double vodka Red Bull? Like, I'm gonna get into it tonight. And the bartender's like, yeah, and he leans over the bar and pets my beard like this. And he's like, I haven't seen you in here before. And I was like, no, nah, my first time. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what, First drinks on me. I was like, what magical place is this that I'm getting a free drink and my butt slapped out the gates? Then I go to the dance floor, it's better than I imagined. Like the lights and the music, and as it comes into focus, I realize you're allowed to take your shirt off. Now you know, I love taking my shirt off in public. And I took it off, but for the first time ever, people cheered. And I was like, oh my God, this could be the best night of my life, yeah. But then I see, like, there's this, uh, this, like, glass cube thing. It's like a shower stall. It's raised up. But there's no water inside. There's just a wasted chick dancing in there. She's like, hey. And the bouncer comes up. He's like, hey, honey, you know the rules. Only dudes allowed in the cube. And takes her down. So I tapped his shoulder. And I was like, wait a minute. Are you saying that I could go dance in the cube? And he was like, nope. I'm saying you're going to. And he lifted me up. I was a child, like my legs were kicking. And then he throws me in there, I start dancing, the whole place goes wild. I was like, oh my God, this is the best night of my life. Number one, no questions asked. I come down out of that cube, right away a dude comes up to me, he's like, hey man, I gotta say, it's my favorite look, like where you work out, but you're still not in shape. <laughs> Too many beers. And he's like, hey, but you got nice eyes and here's a drink. I'm like, oh, you're back in. Uh, <laughs> And he's like, hey, man, I'm JJ. I'm like, hey, JJ, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. And he's like, all right, Chris, time for the big question. Big question here. He's like, you know, now based on the voice, I'd say straight. But he's like, based on that dancing, super gay. <laughs> he's like, now, which is it? Now, I didn't want the drinks and compliments to stop. Uh, so I lied. Like, you know what I mean, ladies. <laughs> I lied a little bit, okay? A tiny fib. I was like, well, I'm both. And he's like, gay and straight? I was like, yeah, just all of it. And he's like, oh, like a buffet. You could pick and choose what you want. I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's amazing. How about we go downstairs to some couches down there? It's a little more quiet and intimate. We can get to know each other. I'll show you my buffet. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I had to think of another lie. But, but at that moment, I saw my friend Brandon dancing on the dance floor. So I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm in a relationship. That's my boyfriend. But as I said the word boyfriend, Brandon started making out with the dude he was dancing with. <laughs> so JJ's like, that's your boyfriend? I'm like, oh my God. So I'm trying to think of another lie. Before I can, he's like, hold on. He's like, Emilio. And he calls over this Latin god, like just this handsome, tanned, like just like a jawline you could rest your 
feelings on him. <laughs> Beautiful man. And he's like, Emilio, this is Chris, and that's his boyfriend, and his boyfriend's kissing somebody else. And I was like, oh, so I had to think of another lie. This is the lie I made up on the spot, okay? I didn't have much time, but I was like, I was like, JJ, Emilio, you see, I'm bisexual, right? So I like to bang dudes and chicks. My boyfriend, Brandon, just straight gay. He only bangs dudes, but he knows I like to bang chicks, so he lets me bang other chicks. Because of that, I let him bang other dudes, but I don't bang other dudes. <laughs> Not too bad for in the moment? And he's like, you don't get to be a part of it? I'm like, I don't know, man. It's never really happened like this before. He's like, ah, we're going to talk about it, but first we're having some shots and a drink. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> but meanwhile, Brandon has no idea what a lying piece of shit I am this whole time. So he comes running over, holding hands with the dude he was kissing. He's like, hey, Griff, I hate to do this to you. I'm going to meet you at the house party. I'm going to have a bit of fun with my friend first. I texted the address. It's like five minute walk away. Bye and leaves. And Emil's like, man, what the hell? He's like, here, take this pill. And now I just love everything. Like it was, not, dude, I was on the dance floor. The DJ said my name over the speakers. He's like, we got Chris Griffin from Family Guy in the house. Like it was, dude, I was crazy. I felt like a celebrity. It was not, at one point I was on Emilio's shoulders, but backwards. Yeah, two hours later, back down on the couches. <laughs> Those separate couches, I had my shirt back on, just me and Emilio hanging out. And meanwhile, Brandon's texting me from the party. He's like, hey Griff, you gonna make it down? And I'm just lighting him up. I'm like, you don't deserve me. This is like, <laughs> but then Emilio, he's like, he's like, hey man, I gotta tell you something. He's like, uh, he's like, you know, I lived my whole life uh, pretending to be straight. And then I came out as gay uh, and uh, two years ago. And he's like, I knew it was tough, but uh, now my family supports me and it's coming around. And I was like, bro, that's amazing. Like, that's incredible. Uh, uh, and now I have to tell him for sure I'm a huge liar. Uh, but before I could do that, he's like, I'm gonna tell you something else I've never told anyone. He's like, I have never sucked a dude off to completion. And I was like, me neither, which <laughs> was the first truthful thing I'd said the whole night. But then he gets up off his couch, comes over to my couch, and he grabs my head to kiss me. And for a second, I was like, maybe, you know? Because he was very handsome. But then, Right as his lips, lips touched, I was like, oh, I can't, I'm sorry, man. And I just ran out of the club into the night. Like, I was like, no. I just yelled at the moon. I was like, no. I was like, it's not your fault. I was like, Emilio. Emilio. I'm like, no, I'm just not gay. I'm not gay. That's all. It's not, I'm not. And then I saw my reflection in the window. I'm like, man, that's the gayest shit <laughs> I've ever seen a human being do. But for anyone. <laughs> For anyone who thinks it's a choice, and I know I'm pre preaching, uh, preaching to the choir here, but for anyone who thinks it's a, a choice, I know for sure it is not because I was <laughs> drunk and high and Emilio was handsome and I was gonna get a blowjob <laughs> to completion. And I said, no, and I was like, oh my God. So I'm trying to like think, I'm like, what is the point of this night, man? And I'm walking around and I think about how Emilio had lived his whole life pretending to be straight, came out as gay and now his life's better. And I'm pretending to be gay to get free drinks and validation or God knows <laughs> what's wrong up here. So it just comes to me, I'm like, man, just be yourself, you know? So simple, just do that. And then I walk and I turn down an alley and I see JJ, the first dude, and he's just like chilling against the wall. So I go to talk to him, but then I see a guy lower in front and I was like, whoa, no, that is the gayest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and then as I walked away, I heard like, oh, and I'm like, cool, to completion. Um, <laughs> But then JJ comes out and he's just like, uh, he's like, uh, hey Chris, how's it going? And I'm like, hey JJ. I'm like, I figured out the whole point of tonight, man. And he's like, yeah, what is it? And I was like, be yourself. And he's like, yeah, man, you got it. That's half of it. And I'm like, what's the other half? He's like, dude, just take the blow job. <laughs> so I spent a month in San Francisco. Um, <laughs> Doing a comedy competition, a separate thing. Those, this is a new joke now. But, uh, but I, and I made the finals of that comedy competition and it was great, but uh, uh, it, it, the, the prelims, the early stages, they don't pay for anything. They don't put you up, so you have to kind of make your own way. And San Francisco is expensive. And then I Googled like how to save money in San Francisco. And Google was like, sleep in your car. And then I Googled how to sleep in your car. And Google was like, find a field, park beside it. So I found this perfect spot. It was a giant field on one side of the street other side of the street, a Taco Bell. And I slept in the back seat of my car four nights in a row, no problem. Fifth night, I'm sleeping and I hear an engine pull up and idle. And I was like, what, what's going on? And I look out the window and it's a cop car and they're like looking in. I'm like, oh man, they're on to me. So I put the back seat down 
and I put my whole body into the trunk. <laughs> and then I closed the seat. Yeah, because there's glow-in-the-dark button in trunks of new cars now. Um, so if you have young kids or grandchildren, <laughs> throw them in there. Like, they'll figure it out eventually, you know? And if they don't, that's their fault. So now I'm sleeping in the trunk of a car, terrified. And like two minutes later, something hits the car hard, like boom. And I'm like, oh my God. So I push the button, trunk pops open, I jump out. I'm like, whoa, hey, what's going on? And it was like a 20 year old girl that had just got Taco Bell. And she's like, my foot slipped off the brake and she'd hit my car. And I'm like, oh man, you made a mark. I'm like, you know what though? That's okay. I'm like, you know why? Because I'm an adult. I got insurance. And I was like, you, get it figured out. And then I went back in the trunk to sleep. <laughs> Good night, yeah. But I've thought so much about that. How scary is that, that I'm sleeping in the trunk of a car and somebody hit, that is terrifying. The only thing I've come up with that's more scary than what I experienced in that moment would be being a 20 year old girl that just got Taco Bell and then accidentally bumps the car in front of her and a 40 year old man comes out of the trunk like, whoa, hey, get it together. I got it figured out. You get it figured out. And it goes back in the trunk to sleep. It's like, who is that guy? I don't know. He's from Canada. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, last story. So, I have a, a friend of mine, a mentor, I'd say. Uh, his name is Daryl Lennox. Uh, if you don't know Daryl, uh, you know, he's done a lot in comedy. He's been on, you know, late night television. Uh, last year, he had the number one album in the U.S. Uh, for a little bit. He has his own episode of the This American Life podcast, which has millions of viewers. But if you don't know Daryl, though, he's like a six foot three. 250 pound black dude from New York, like big guy. And then over the 10 years I've known him, he's lost his vision. He's gone completely blind, um, but he knew it was happening. And he still likes to live life, you know, the best way he can. And he still likes to go bar hopping in, in Vancouver where I live. So we have a system, he'll go to the bar and when he's had enough of the one bar, he'll order a shot of Patron and he'll take the Patron and he'll go, all right, Chris Griffin, we're going to the next bar. Then he stands up Then I stand up and he puts his hand on my shoulder and I lead him where we gotta go. So we're doing that. Downtown Vancouver, it's like 1 a.m., and there's a group of white guys, 20-year-olds, I guess, but not from Canada. They had accents. And I just said to the guy in the front, I was like, hey, man, coming through. Excuse me. And the guy's like, you think I'm going to move so you can go fuck your homo boyfriend? And I was like, whoa. I was like, okay, first of all, man, if you come to Vancouver and you're a homophobe, your travel agent sucks. Like, like fire that guy. He's pranking you, okay? And second of all, if I'm gonna dabble in being gay, which obviously could happen, I'm not gonna start with six foot three, 250 pound Daryl Lennox, okay? I'll fuck this dude first, you know? I'll fuck the two opening comedians. I'll work my way up. Fuck Caleb for sure. I'll work my way up to Daryl. So I get so mad at this guy. I'm like, what the hell did you say? And the guy starts running. He's like, you're not gonna catch me, you old loser. And I'm like, man, this dude is an age of phobe too. So I got so mad, I ran as fast as I could, and I caught him, which I think surprised both of us. Like, <laughs> like I ran around a car and I didn't know what to do, and I know this is dumb, but I escalated the situation. I grew up poor, I punched him in the face. And as I hit him, I yelled, words have consequences. <laughs> which is, holy shit, I'm old. <laughs> That's my catchphrase? <laughs> words have consequences? It's like the shittiest superhero of all time. Like, like I guard the library. <laughs> Always return your books on time. Yeah. But then his friends caught up to me and they're much more action speak loud than the words, guys, because they just beat the shit out of it. But it, it didn't hurt. Like I was on my knees covering my head and the whole time they were just kicking me in the ribs. Like, dude, dude, like so fast though. I'm like, how many legs do these guys have? Like, am I fighting octopuses? Like, this is, like, have you ever, have you ever been walking down a lot of steps and your foot misses one and then your butt slides? Like, like that. It was that noise and feeling. And the whole time I was down there, all I could think is I feel alive, <laughs> which is fucked. But everyone <laughs> deals with breakups differently. And, then, <laughs> and then, thank God, uh, this bouncer guy saw it and he had the guy and he was holding him. And he's like, do you want to press charges? And I was like, nah, I feel this whole thing is fair. You know, I feel everyone learned a lesson tonight. And the best part is I just looked down the street and I just see poor blind Daryl, he just by himself. He just like, whoa. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was just standing there oblivious. He, he didn't know what was happening. The street thing's like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> so I was, I was like, I gotta help my friend. So I ran up and he was like, hey man, where'd you go? And I was like, oh, I just dropped something. And he was like, words have consequences. <laughs> I was like, well, they do. Anyway, you guys are awesome, man. 
Thank you for coming out and supporting. We love you. Good night.